I'm Jenny Graham Hoosier, and I am a realistic painter and an art instructor. Um, we're here today, we're going to be doing some painting together uh, with acrylic paint, and our project is called Geopoppin. So, Geopoppin with acrylic paint. This is set for 6th to 8th graders. So, welcome. A uh, little bit about our project today. We'll use canvas paper and acrylic paint to create five paintings based on interesting designs that you'll create. You'll get plenty of experience mixing paint and painting, as well as becoming familiar with some artist terms. All right, now for this final project of Geopoppin, we are going to make um, our own design using all the different skills that we've already learned this week. So we are going to have our palette paper. We're going to put our colors on it and make sure that we have white and black so that we can tint and shade whatever color we mix. And our painting paper it's going to start out white and then you can choose to paint the whole background a background color or you can choose to leave it white because we are going to be drawing on top of this and then filling in different areas to make a very cool geopop and design all right let's get started so i always love to have a background shade so I am just going to go ahead and make it light. And I'm going to be super quick with it. All right, so it's very, very tinted. It's a tinted paper. Um, it was white and now I added the teeniest bit of red and blue. So it's kind of lavender-ish. And I am complete with my underpainting. So as you can see, it is still wet. So this is a fine time if you did want to, if you know what you're drawing and you draw right into it, or wait until it dries. Think of your, you know, get, make sure that you have all the supplies that you need, which is the ruler. And if you need a piece of paper that you're going to be drawing with. Now I am just going to be making some strips. I don't think I'm going to be making ribbons all the way down. I think I'm just going to have one ribbon. And then the rest are just going to... I'm just going to let myself create whatever kind of intuitive pattern I want to. It's going to be whatever I am feeling at the moment. Don't worry if it's right or if it's wrong because we're going to be adding colors. And because there is no right and there is no wrong. So use your ruler to create lines, to create rays. I'm even going to leave that space open because why not? Yeah, I'm moving that. All right. Now I still have my stencil from when we had our other project where we were experimenting with tints and shades. So I'm just going to use this shape that I had cut out originally, but you can do that. You can create another one with drawing paper. You just get some scissors. You can create your own. And I just want to keep the whole shape just to make it you uniform all throughout. I'm just going to randomly place it in different areas. So this is what you're going to do with the whole sheet. You're just going to randomly fill in shapes using stencils using a ruler and you can even try to make your ribbons again if you wanted to add them. So you're going to fill up your sheet like this and I am not going to get too detailed. I'm not going to make like little tiny drawings in here because it's hard to get in there with the paintbrush. This is already going to be hard enough but you don't also have to fill in every single tiny little area. 
you can leave some of it blank and just have your pencil marks shine through and have that be a part of the painting. So I'm going to get started mixing some of my colors. All right, so I just made a tinted orange, so it's pretty light. And I'm going to paint this background area. Now you always want to start background to foreground. It's one thing to remember. So you want to do the big areas that are behind your drawing. So this is my, my ribbon. So I'm going to paint this area that appears to be behind my ribbon. And then this bottom area, which appears to be behind my ribbon. I'm going to paint these first before I get into my ribbon because it's going to make everything pop. So I have painted my background, both um, the top area and the bottom area of my ribbon. Now I kind of have a pink area down here, orangey pink, and then orange up here. I wanted it to kind of be a little bit different on both sides, and it was very easy to do because I ran out of paint, and so I had to mix more as I was painting, so it's very easy to change the actual background color. So I'm going to remember what was not mixed in because I want to make a complement. I want to make a complementary color for behind. So for orange, I mix red and yellow and blue is not mixed in. So I'm going to make a blue ribbon. I'm going to use two different shades, two different tints. Um, so I'm going to take some blue over here and I'm going to take some white. And I'm going to paint this area light blue, this area light blue. And now I'm going to do dark blue for right here and here. Cool, so now I have the bottom of my painting already complete. Now I get to work on these areas up here and same exact idea. I'm gonna continue to paint from background to foreground. So because these are stripes, I'm going to consider that this is the background and going forward, each one is on top of the other. So I'll paint this one. And then I'm gonna paint this one. And then I'm gonna paint this one. And then we're going to go in here and paint the background of these shapes. And then we can go ahead in and actually paint the shapes. And from there, we can choose what to do in here. You can either leave it that way, or you can go in and paint some individual diamonds, or you can leave it. Because a lot of your painting is already going to be vibrant and complete and popping at you, this could be something especially in the smaller areas, it'll be really hard to paint with our tools that we have. So you could always even just use your pencil and shade it in if you wanted to make a checkered background. But we will get to that in a second because we still have some more areas to paint. And Right here, I'm going to mix the white and the black in with the yellow to make a gray, because that is how you make gray. You make gray by mixing white and black, and then you can change the gray tone a little bit by adding just one color. So I kind of want to make my gray a little bit vibrant, especially behind this really kind of busy design but you are welcome to do however it is that you would like. And I guess I really do like this kind of gray color. I want to continue it over here, but maybe I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the black and maybe even a little bit more of the yellow. And then kind of mix it up a little bit and then have this behind these shapes. All right, so I have painted that all in. And so I just had started with some simple shapes that repeated over the whole page. 
And from there, I decided to make a ribbon with a complementary color behind. So I took an orange-ish color. I had a little bit of red over here, but this is orange behind a blue ribbon. And then I went from there, kind of almost like a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, because this kind of reminds me of a green gray. But this is how I started it. So I took my ruler, created these awesome little shapes, um, and now I, have, I used my stencil to create these repeating shapes, and I'm going to fill them in now. I'm going to mix a color. Why not purple? I have not used purple yet. A little bit of red, a little bit of blue. And should I make it light or dark? I think I'm going to have it be nice and dark. Make a little bit more blue. Make a little bit more red. Just to see how these mix together. Okay, well, that's an okay color. And I just fill in my shapes as best I can. Again, nothing is perfect. Once this dries, I can always go over it again to make it nice and dark. Or I can keep it light by doing it once. Okay, so I've painted all those little shapes and now I can decide what to do here inside of these areas. And I think I'm going to decide to use my pencil and I'm just gonna do a quick shade. Same pattern, every other. One, I'm not even gonna be exact with it. I could, and it would probably look better. But I think I'm only going to do it for this back row, and then maybe this row. And I may stop, because I actually don't like it too much. It's not painting. So I don't think I'm gonna continue on that because just doesn't solve, it doesn't fix the problem that I want. So I want this to be a full painting and I don't want to draw on top, but that is just me and you are welcome to do whatever you want in here. So I'm going to choose a really tinted color. So that's super wet. Now, if that ever happens, if you have a lot of water on your brush, you need to use um, either a piece of paper or a paper towel and kind of dry off their brush so that there's no more water on it. So I'm going to grab some of the white and I kind of like it the way it is. I think I'm just going to keep it. Okay, so I actually erased the pencil marks just because I wanted to just leave this um, a white pop out. Um, to paint inside of each one of these, you could totally do, and you could really take your time with it, or you could grab colored pencils or markers and do the same thing. But with a pencil, just a regular tube pencil, it wouldn't look that nice, in my opinion, for this one painting. So I'm not going to do it, but um, if you have smaller areas, feel free to color it with a colored pencil and make it mixed media, or just leave it like this. All right. So thank you guys so much. I've had so much fun making paintings with you, and I hope that you learned a lot about complementary colors, tinting and shading, and all sorts of fun activities and skills. Thanks guys.